Alright, welcome back. Volterra. Here it is. Comparing it against the Mac Mini. If you didn't see my intro video, just my overall thoughts on it. I'll link to it down below. Today we're getting specific and we are going to focus on Visual Studio because developers that are going to be interested in this machine are probably going to be using Visual Studio. And Visual Studio for ARM is really nice. It's fast. It doesn't have all the features yet because it's still in preview as of the time of this video, but it's looking to be really good. Now, Visual Studio for Windows doesn't run on a Mac Mini, does it? You can run it through virtualization. So right now I have Mac Mini, it's running Mac OS, but I installed a program called Parallels, which is an ARM-based program, so it's running natively on Apple Silicon, and hosted in that is Windows for ARM. Windows for ARM is the same OS that's running here natively on the Volterra box. Sorry, Windows Dev Kit 2023, okay? I like to call it Volterra. Since we've got Windows for ARM on both of these, I've installed Visual Studio 2022 to preview for ARM. Yes, Visual Studio for Windows does come for ARM now. It's coming soon as a full release, but now it's in preview and you can still do your tasks and everything. Just test it out. It's really nice. Now, why would you compare Mac Mini, which is a consumer level machine, to a box that's geared towards developers? They called it Windows Dev Kit 2023 because it's for developers. It's not meant for consumers. Sure, consumers can run ARM, Windows and everything, but the amount of software that's available for consumers is still very little so there's going to be a lot of translation between software that's still meant for x64 into arm to run on arm hardware and that is going to slow it down considerably so you want to avoid doing that for now in windows you only want to use arm software so you don't take that performance hit for developers that's not a problem there's plenty of arm based software including wsl2 that runs on this box wsl is windows subsystem for linux so you're effectively in a linux environment and you can use a ton of linux software that's built for ARM already that's available that way. Now the Mac Mini is running Apple Silicon, which is ARM based and you get Mac OS there. So you can do everything in Mac OS and also the things you can do in Windows for ARM. And as a developer, you can consider getting a Mac Mini, even if you're a .NET developer using Visual Studio, because uh, it does perform pretty well. It's been around for a while, much longer than Microsoft's hardware. So let's have a closer look today and run some programs. And specifically, I want to have a look at Benchmarks game because because we've done this before on the channel. There is a C sharp section there and I've run this Mandelbrot.net test before. Now what I typically like about this test is that it maximizes the processors that are available. What I've done is I copied this code just like that right out of here and I've pasted it into a console application in a Visual Studio solution. Let's pop open Visual Studio and see how long it takes on each one of these machines so we can compare that as well while we're doing this and let's go. It's pretty close, but it looked like the one on Mac Mini in Virtual Machine actually popped up a little bit faster. I'm gonna create a new project in both of these, and it's gonna be a console application written in C-sharp, .NET 6, LTS, long-term support. .NET 6 does run on ARM, by the way, so we're good with that. And once I click Create, I wanna watch how long it takes to create this project. Let's go. Okay. Axel. <laughs> If any of you have a dog and the dog's sleeping, sometimes they have dreams and sometimes they're pretty loud. Like they're chasing a rabbit or something. I don't know. I'm gonna give this one to the Volterra box that opened up faster and created the project faster. Now I do already have the code copied over. So I'm just gonna open up that by double clicking the solution or maybe I'll just select it and press enter because you can do that in Windows. I like that about Windows. And let's go. It's a tough one, but uh, this one, the Mac Mini opened that solution solution up quicker. I'm recording the Volterra box temporarily now and I wanted to show you the only difference in the code that I made from that one available on Benchmarks game is that I added a stopwatch. So in the, my main right here, I created a stopwatch, I start it, then I run the algorithm and then I stop it. And then I write out the total execution time. I will build this in debug for ARM. You can also select any CPU if you want, but I'm just going to target ARM here and debug. Of course, the results, if you're building in release mode, are are gonna be much different. They're gonna be much faster and optimized, but uh, the code that is gonna generate on this machine versus this machine is gonna be exactly the same because the optimizations are gonna be the same. There's no Intel Vertex optimizations here. There's no AVX2. Everything is done for ARM, so the optimizations are not as good as the ones for Intel right now, but it's probably gonna get there. So we're still comparing ARM and ARM. We're not doing Intel versus ARM here. ARM versus 
arm. And therefore, it doesn't matter if you're doing debug or release mode, you can extrapolate the release time is going to be much faster. So now I'm just going to build this. First, I'll clean this and then I'll go ahead and rebuild this. Pop open terminal. Let's go to source repos Mandelbrot bin arm debug. And then we I think we need dot net. Yeah, net six. OK, finally, we're there in the directory that we need. <laughs> So to run this, we just do .NET Mandelbrot DLL, and I'm gonna pass in the parameter, a parameter that they suggest, which is 16,000. I'm using 16,000 here, not that it really matters, but uh, just for consistency between some of my tests that I've previously done. Okay, everything is set up now for me to run this. I got this uh, command line set up here, and I got the command line set up here. All I gotta do is just press enter at the same time, and let's go. They're off to the races, let's see who wins. Ah, okay. On the Mac Mini, we've got 12,365 milliseconds, and here we go. On Volterra, we've got 10,694 milliseconds. So clearly Volterra wins here, right? Well, um, not so fast. Let's dig in a little bit more, shall we? Remember when I said that the Mandelbrot test was actually a multi-core test? Which means that it's really good to test systems that have the same number of cores. If we take a look at Task Manager here, I'm showing all the logical processors here. It's showing the work being done by all the processors. And if I go ahead and run that test one more time, let's give it 50,000 as the parameter so it just keeps going a little bit more. Look at that. It's gonna utilize all the processors to the max. Utilization, 99%. Pretty cool, huh? Well, let's have a look over here. Here's Task Manager running and showing you the CPUs, but there's only six of them instead of the eight that are over here. If there's six here and we run that uh, Mandelbrot test with 50,000 as the parameter, that's fine and all. It'll still utilize all the processors that are available, all the logical cores but it will always be slower executing this program because the work is split between the cores. Oh, look at this one. <laughs> you can't even see the chart anymore, it's so full. Okay, it's finishing up now. What that means is that the longer you run this test, the faster this machine is going to seem because the test is not what we really wanna know. You might ask, well, why do we only have six processors here and we have eight here? And when we're running inside a virtual machine, we can actually configure the virtual machine with the parameters that we want. So I'm giving this machine four gigabytes of RAM. It's all grayed out because the machine is turned on right now. And I'm giving it six processors. I can change the hardware specs that I give to a virtual machine through parallels. So for example, this is my MacBook Pro where I also have parallels installed. And here I'm giving it eight processors and 24 gigs of RAM. I'm gonna run it here to compare. Okay, they're all done now. Now let's compare this. So on the Volterra box, which has eight processors, that took 103 seconds. On the Mac Mini, which only got six processors, it took longer, of course. 120 seconds, but on the MacBook Pro, where we allocated eight processors, 81 seconds. So if you really wanna compare the per core performance here of the Volterra box versus a virtualized core on the Mac mini, you really should pick a single threaded or a single core operation. So I found another algorithm on Benchmarks game that I've never run before here, and it's this one right here. It's called nbody.net number three, to be more specific, and I copied this one. This is a, a single core operation by the way it tells you how to build it how to run it you can do everything from command line of course but i'm going to use visual studio and the parameter that this one accepts is 50 million i've also modified the main method here to contain the stopwatch starting and stopping it and then writing out the elapsed milliseconds and that's pretty much it i'm building it in debug configuration for arm processors let's clean it and let's build it now we don't have to open up terminal we can do it right from here so i'm gonna pop open terminal right inside Visual Studio, which drops me into close enough. Okay, there is nbody3 DLL. So we run it with .NET and pass in the 50 million. Is that 50 million? That's 50 million. Okay, I'm gonna do the same thing over here on the mini and we're ready to go. I'm gonna press enter at the same time on both of these and let's go. Okay, it's, uh, it's going. That was pretty fast. It's done already. So on the Mac mini, we finished that in 11.2 seconds and on Volterra, 20 seconds. 
I'm gonna run this one more time with 500,000 as the parameter. So that gives us a little bit more of a chance to look at task manager. Oh, I meant um, 500 million. Let's go. Let's take a look at task manager to see what's happening there. And unlike the previous test, the Mandelbrot test, this test will more accurately represent per core performance because we're only using one core here while this is running. Sure, it might offload to a different core once in a while, as you can see here, but primarily it's using one core. By the way, take a look at this. The speed is 2.93 gigahertz and the base speed is three gigahertz on this machine. Now, if we hop over to the Mac Mini side, also the utilization is not quite as high. And also most of the work is done on one core. The base speed is 3.2 and the speed is 3.2 here. All right, we've got the result and it's definitely clear what's going on here. On Volterra, we've got a result, 185 seconds to complete. And you can see here that even virtualized Mac Mini does a pretty incredible job here through Parallels. Um, link down below, by the way, if you wanna pick up a copy of Parallels. And there actually might be a coupon code. I'll add it to the description if there is. So check it out, 110 seconds on this one versus 185 on the other one. That difference is quite huge. That's it for today, folks. Hopefully you enjoyed this. If you wanna see more tests, write them down below and I'll be back.